Okay, I think um, we're ready to at least start the, uh, the, if you can mute yourself. Or can you mute everything? You ain't getting paid, but I'm not staying no more. Yeah, make sure you're muted. June, you're not June board. All right, June ready? Yeah. And the Yeah, I'm going to get you to say. Yesterday. Hey, June, can you? Can, oh, there you are. Never mind. You got it. You got it. All right. Okay. So um, before we start, um, we're going to do a little bit of a roll call. I want to make sure very quickly um, that I'm not missing anybody that's on here. Um, if you are on here, please, again, mute yourself. I think we've already muted most everybody, but just in case. Um, so when I call roll, I can see everybody. Oh, no. Just, um, just raise your hands or oh. wave. I don't know if everybody knows how to wave. How to wave. What do you okay. do? All right. That's okay if you don't. Um, and I'm gonna uh, call out some folks as well. So I see um, Amanda Goins, they on here? No, that's okay. Okay, um, Deborah Poindexter, I saw you, right? Help me, oh, I see them, yep, they're not, they don't have video though. Gotcha. Yep. All right, uh, Leah Poindexter's with you. Uh, Bobby Spry, I didn't see Bobby join. Nope, that's okay. Um, Karen Williams. Nope. Cody Osborne. Not seeing it. Uh, the Nelsons. I think they said they're going to have to join later. Some folks that registered realized that they probably weren't going to be able to do it this week. Vicki Webb. Okay, that's all right. Uh, Leslie Smithson, Amber Yost, I see you. Okay, got one. Uh, Elizabeth Yeager, I saw, didn't I? Yeah, okay. Uh, June Board, I know I saw June. Hey, June. <laughs> LaGretta Baker. Sarah Moore, MK, I saw MK, O'Haver, yep, thumbs up, there we go, okay. Journey one, I did not see Joni. Joni, you on here? No. Uh, da, ba, 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 ba. This type is really small or I'm getting really old, let's see. Victor Plumbly. okay. Taylor Jones, May Mary and Butch Jones, I saw them. Yep, I see you. Okay. Keegan Browning. No. Uh, Phyllis Wilcox. Oh, I see. Okay, I see you chatted on there too. Beth Casey. It's easier to see on my list of who's here, really. Doesn't that make more sense? Yes. Okay. Um, I saw Pam. On Anna, Anna, can I tell everybody who you are? I can, I really can. Okay, all right, so um, you guys, I think this is really cool and I'm gonna embarrass her and I'm really sorry, but I think it's just really, really cool. Um, on the call tonight is Anna Matheny, but she also is Anna Riviera. And if you, if you know art, you may have heard of a guy named Diego Rivera, who was one of the very first um, commercially and socially uh, positioned muralist of our time. Um, he is iconic, he is historic, and he also um, was married to another artist who most of you know, probably more than Diego, and that's Frida Kahlo. If you've heard of Frida Kahlo, raise your hand. Okay, or shake your head, that's fine too. Okay, all right. So um, Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera were incredibly important. I can't express the importance that they had on the art world, um, both in their time and now for uh, Frida Kahlo has become a symbol for little girls. My daughter has a Frida Kahlo action figure and she paints Frida Kahlo all the time. And countless kids that I've worked with idolize her legacy and her bravery as a person and as an artist. And we have with us tonight, Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera's great niece, Anna. 
So Anna, thank you for joining us. Uh, we can't see what can't wait to see what you do. Do you want to say anything? Have I embarrassed you enough? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but um, no, no, you didn't embarrass me. Uh, I'm kind of a, a shy person, and thank you, Jeff, for inviting me to participate in this art project. It is very important to me. I love art, and um, well, I I thank you for honoring my, you know, my relatives and especially Frida because I know that you have painted her and uh, it is a great honor to be here and uh, thank you for letting me participate in uh, and to share this time with you all. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. It's such a cool thing for you to be with us. We can't see, can't wait to see what you do. Um, also with us tonight, we're, we've been kind of having like a, a sort of a co-host of sorts. And so I called um, Morgan Robinson from the Clay Center and Morgan's going to be kind of joining along with us tonight and just kind of plugging us along, making sure I stay on track, along with Lori Brannon from the planning department who's running all the technical side. So um, the technical side. Morgan, welcome. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I have a fellow Clay Center staff member, Kara Taylor, who is joining us as well. And I will tell you, Kara is the artistic one. She uh, works in our art department at the Juliet Art Museum. So I'm very excited to see what she has up her sleeve. And I've already warned her that I will be picking on her. Uh, I know some of you on this Zoom. I'm excited to see some familiar faces. Y'all know I'm going to pick on you too, but nobody is off limits. So watch out. We're going to have a whole lot of fun. And in full disclosure and full transparency, I have done this once before. But my photo was not good. So I'm considering this my do over and hopefully I will have better luck the second time. I'm going to channel the energy of your talented relatives on it. And hopefully I can absorb some of that in my own skills this afternoon or this evening. But thank you so much for having me, Jeff. This is such an important project uh, at the Clay Center. Obviously, we love supporting anything that has to do with the arts and culture in our city and state. And we're excited to be part of this mural activity as well as we embark on our own public art with the sculpture garden that's going to be opening up later this spring, hopefully in May. So if you've driven by the Clay Center, you've probably seen that in action. In a couple of weeks, we'll be having the centerpiece sculpture, this gorgeous glass water feature installed in the center of the sculpture garden. And we hope everyone can come and check it out. I know Kara has put together, Jeff, Kara and I were joking, you have 450 more of these faces to uh, have turned in to make this mural happen. And Kara feels your pain as we had how many hundreds of glass tiles to make the reflecting pond. So that just shows how much we appreciate every little bit of effort y'all are putting in tonight to make this beautiful work of art happen for our city. Yes, thanks, Morgan. I appreciate that. And we were really excited about that sculpture garden for sure. Um, before we begin, I'm going to um, give you guys a little bit of background. Most of you by now have heard about the mural, whether it's been through the social media, the uh, news media, uh, or just um, talking to folks here at the city. So I'm going to do a little bit of um, a talk about it um, before. I want you to, this is kind of our pet, our, our um, pet video. I'm going to play this, and I'm not sure if we'll have audio or not, but if it does, can everybody see that? They can see it okay? okay yep. So um, some of you have, have seen that video, maybe that's what made you register tonight. Um, I'm gonna show you as we talk about the mural itself. So um, this is uh, the initial painting that I did. It's probably eight inches by 10 inches. And this was a, just an idea of, we wanted to do a mural of Martin Luther King. And we tend to um, do, did, can you see it? Oh. Let's stop that, sorry. Let me reshare screen and do this. Is that better? Okay, so this is the painting that I was talking about that wasn't on the screen. 
Uh, this is Martin Luther King. Uh, this, we decided we wanted to do a, a portrait of Dr. King on the King Center. Um, I did this uh, quick little painting of Dr. King. I uh, wanted to show color and diversity, but I also thought to myself, how could we further engage our community in something like this? And so I tend to do things a little bit too big. So I thought, what if the background was color fields and those color fields were made up of small or various sizes at that time, uh, portraits from our community. So we were engaging our community by a reflection of ourselves quite literally as we, we put in. Um, at that time, we thought we'd only have like maybe six or seven portraits because you can see they're scaled larger, but then we did it differently. And then this is what it's gonna look like when it's finished somewhat. Um, this is the a Photoshop version of the piece. So I thought then I had to think, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna achieve uh, a 16 by 20 foot portrait of Dr. King with a 60, I think it's 60 feet wide um, background. So first we had to kind of conquer what he was gonna look like. And so we had to get him painted. And so we had a Saturday pre-COVID, of course, we set up this large paint by number. And Martin Luther King is painted on the same material that we're gonna paint on tonight. It's called Polytab. And Polytab is a special mural fabric where you can paint it anywhere, anytime with anybody. So we did this on a Saturday. We set up these large tables with this large piece of poly tab and did a paint by number. And at the end of the day, we had kind of a base coat of Dr. King. That was great. Then we started working on the portraits. And I was able at that time to go out and work with people directly. And it wasn't, it was never meant for just kids. Um, but I did start out by going to some schools and we had some great portraits and then we all know what happened, COVID happened. So I couldn't go to nursing homes, I couldn't go to schools, we couldn't have public events. So then we had to start doing everything like we're doing tonight. And so this is what my setup looked like, looks like uh, from behind the scenes is our virtual workshops. And we've had a few, and there you can see, yes, this is what we look like if you could see us, Lori and I. And then you can see that we, we share periodically throughout the evening, we're gonna be sharing our progress. And um, at the end of the night, hopefully we'll, have, we'll all have something that looks like this. Well, not like this guy, but your own. There's some of the other portraits. Um, again, this workshop has been for all ages and all skill level. If it's been a while since you have since you've painted, that's okay. Um, if, if it's been 30 years, that's okay too. Um, I'm gonna say something about that before I go on. One thing I always say before we start is that um, the last time you drew, it may have been when you were in grade school even, that's probably where your skill level is because that's where you stopped doing it. Um, some of us kind of keep doing it. It's like playing an instrument. If you keep doing it, you're gonna get better and better and better. But everybody tonight, I promise you this, everybody tonight, if they follow along and they can draw simple shapes, you will be able to come up with a really cool image of yourself that is gonna be an incredible part of our mural. Um, I did a little bit of Photoshopping. Um, <laughs> this is not what it's, so this is kind of what it's gonna look like before we put your portraits on, we're gonna paint this kind of these blank color fields, and then we're gonna add your portraits. If you can see that, I did a few in Photoshop and that's really, um, that's the scale. So that's a better understanding of the scale we're gonna be using. Um, behind me here at the, um, let's see if I can move this over here like that instead of using my phone, you guys can see that I started to go in on the Martin Luther King portrait and actually um, render him out. Uh, so it looks more like my initial painting study. And then once that's done, we will start putting it all on the wall. And we will have a, a great, um, awesome portrait made up from uh, people from our community. And in order to do that, we have to have a thousand portraits. And like, um, I forget who said it, Morgan, I think. We have like 600 maybe, um, but it's not nearly enough. So we're gonna be continuing to plug away at this until we get it and having public workshops. So please, if you have a good time tonight, uh, share your experience with someone else so they would be encouraged uh, to do this and remind them that it takes it doesn't take artistic ability, just a couple hours of free time and a willingness to do what you can to have fun. And um, the end result is gonna look like you somewhat, but maybe not I, I, you know, identically to what you're thinking in your head. Um, I've been working as an artist for a long time and it very seldom is exactly what I'm thinking in my head gets to the paper. It's, it's never that perfect. So with that, let's get started.
So the first thing you're gonna need out of your kit is just your square of poly tab and a pencil. And I'm gonna switch cameras, or not switch cameras, but add a camera. While you guys are doing that. I'm gonna probably look a little, little stupid. <laughs> I mentioned this is a casual workshop that we will have some technical difficulties. Okay. I'm glad you said that, Jeff, because I'll warn everyone when I'm unmuted. I have three, I'm going to call them rescue dogs. They are. That just makes people feel more sympathetic of them. I have three lovely rescue dogs. We call them the rat pack because they're all like very small yippy dogs and they're very loud. So if at any point you hear what sounds like a thundering herd of rodents running behind me or under me or barking, don't fear. It's just the Robinson family dog. And I'm sure they'll make their appearance because they do in every Zoom call. Every meeting I've had for the past 11 months on Zoom, at least one of them has made their, their presence known and has participated. So I'm sure that they will not leave you hanging tonight either if you're a dog lover. My tripod is for the drawing part is broken. I'm not sure how that happened. Just give me a few seconds here, guys. Let me fix this. Uh, let's see. At least we can see it, right? Where is it? Can you let's see here? Well, I'm calling the police. Hold on one second. <gasps> While Jeff is uh, working through his technical difficulties and calling Charleston's finest for some backup, uh, anybody have any art experience that they want to let out? Do they have uh, any shows of hands? Do we have any seasoned artists here? I see some girls up there. I see some girls saying, yeah. All right, there we go. I love it. Carrie, you better raise your hand as well. You've got, you're our resident artist at the Clay Center. Uh, as I said before, I definitely do not, uh, but this was a whole lot of fun. I had the opportunity. I work uh, also with Festival, which I hope everyone is aware of and, and looking forward to bringing back this summer, hopefully in person. Uh, so as part of Festival, I got to do a trial run of this early on. And yeah, my lack of talent definitely showed. So I'm hoping that my do-over is more successful, but this was so much fun. I am married to an artist who actually did the piece behind me and he really showed me up when he did his so uh i was going to try to sneak him in to do mine for me while we were doing this and like play it off but i'm going to be honest i'm going to give it another go okay we may have to um use a different camera i don't know because i don't want to waste any more time let's see me leave and come back real quick Did everybody, um, if you, while you're waiting for me, if you um, printed out a, like a reference photo or if you have a mirror, um, if you didn't hear me say that before, didn't see that on email, you might want to do that in this couple of seconds that I'm trying to figure this out. I'm duct taping my camera to my tripod at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, I will say the reference photo really helps. So even if you want to take just a selfie right now on your iPhone, we might laugh at you while you're doing it, but we're laughing with you, not at you. So it's totally fine. But the reference photo does help because, uh, you know, unless you look in the mirror a lot during the day, I don't think a lot of us are super familiar with what our features look like. Uh, I did love when I did my original uh, session, Jeff was talking about my eyebrows, which everyone can see are incredibly pronounced. So I was really trying to walk a thin line of not being a caricature of myself with these like huge Groucho Marx eyebrows, but you know, we'll see. I'm going to get it here. <laughs> okay. It's nothing else I can do it like we did the first time around. I'm duct taping it as we speak. <laughs> if anybody sees Sylvia, tell her she can't play with my tripod anymore. Oh, we're recording on YouTube. She's gonna watch that. Just kidding, baby. All right. So, um, if you can see, there's a screen. Can you have you spotlighted it? Okay. So now you can see. You see my hand there. Um, I'm afraid to touch the tripod. So I'm gonna kind of do this. 
Yeah, there we go. You can see my. And if you're if you're still yeah, go ahead and just spotlight just this one. So you don't see me trying to fumble around with my tripod. <laughs> okay, so in your square, yeah, there I can see it better now too. I'm gonna try to bring this up just a little bit. There, that's perfect. I won't touch it. Okay, technical difficulties are behind us. So what I want you to do first is get get a good get your square in a good position. There, there, that's good. Okay. So um, we're gonna draw our head shape first. And the head shape is the simplest shape, um, just to get a, a simple shape, just to get us started. And so what I'm gonna have you do, I'm gonna use a piece of paper, I'm cheating a little bit, but I, is I want you to, um, I'm upside down, here, let's try that. And of course it's gonna come out on me. That's all right, we'll get it. Just don't touch it, Pearson. Okay, so your egg shape, is gonna be centered in the center of your square. So if you have your square here, there's your square, you wanna make sure, I'm just gonna draw right on here, who cares? You're gonna draw nice and light. We're gonna draw light first until we get our, our first round of sketching done. You're gonna draw just a simple egg shape. You're gonna draw it light. You notice that I'm not drawing it I'm not taking the first egg shape I do. I'm kind of sketching it until I feel I get it right. And I feel that's okay right now. I'm gonna probably add hair later. So I might wanna leave a little bit of room up there um, above the pencil for hair. And so we're all just drawing our egg shape right now to get us started on what that shape is gonna be for our head. We're gonna change that later. This is again, their first round of our sketching is just an initial sketch to get us started. Oh, um, Jennifer, great, great question. I got a little discombobulated with the technical difficulties. On, make sure that you're drawing on the matte side. If you see there's a kind of a glossy side, that's the back. Thank you so much, Jennifer. See that glossiness to this? That's the back side. So you wanna make sure you're painting on the front side, the matte side versus glossy. And let's all take a second right now, actually, flip it over to the back side, the glossy side that kind of has this kind of weird peeling plastic key kind of feel to it and find somewhere um, kind of in the center and write your name. So when I get these back, I can get a handle of who these belong to and then um, your name and your hometown. You can claim your hometown wherever you want it to be. It's where you lived the longest, where you were born, where you are now. Um, that's up to you, but your name and hometown on the back. And then again, that's the glossy side. We're back to the matte side and we're gonna be working on the face. So most everybody at this point should have somewhat of an egg shape. Um, this is just gonna help us along as we go. Our goal in our first round is to do this, is to kind of create a structural drawing that's gonna help us look and see where things are gonna go. When we're drawing the eyes, nose, mouth, and ears at this first stage, we're not trying to make them look like our eyes, nose, and mouth, and ears. We're just putting kind of like placeholders where things are gonna be on the face. That way, if something's wrong, we're not spending all this time doing the detail of those eyes until we know where they're in the right place and the right size and the right shape, generally. So this is just a sketch at this point. Um, this is how I do almost every single illustration portrait that I do. I guess I didn't mention that if you guys didn't know that I also am an illustrator that does a lot of work around and things like that. So um, once you have your X shape, we're gonna do a couple lines just to give us some measurements. Gonna go very, very light, so light that I, you can't even see on your monitor, I bet. I'm gonna come right down the middle of the head, right down the middle of the egg shape, super light. It's so light that you cannot even see it. If there it is, but super, super light, right down the middle. And nothing we're doing tonight has to be perfect. Well, this is just giving us a place to start. It's super simple. These are all simple shapes, simple, simple drawing. And I will repeat myself like a thousand times, I'm sure. 
All right. Then we're going to do that. We're going to come down. We're not going to come down halfway on the head this way. Um, we're going to come up right there about where my pencil is. You kind of see that's where the eyes are going to go. Now, generally thinking, our forehead and then our hair, those of you that have hair, you're going to have to leave room for hair. So you come down right to where your forehead would stop. So it's not quite halfway. I'm going to draw a line there. So that's where I'm going to remember that's where my eyes are going to go. Let me bring it closer so you guys can see it better. And these are just generic measurements. These are not the academic accuracies that I usually teach in like a figure drawing or a uh, portrait drawing class. We're just trying to get ourselves to the point of having a portrait that we can paint um, and let you guys run wild with it. Now I have my eye line. Now I do have a shape from here to here that I'm gonna split in half. And that's, that's where the nose is gonna be. So I'm not even gonna draw a full line. I'm just gonna draw a little line right there. I think the nose is probably gonna be right around there. So you're gonna kind of go halfway between the eyes and the chin and think about where my nose is gonna be. Now, proportionally, as we get older, um, our nose, for men, our noses and ears never stop growing. So if, if, that's why if you see old men, they, they have their noses and ears are disproportional to their heads and faces. That's because our, it, we never, I don't know why, but our noses and ears never stop growing, which is I'm in trouble because mine is already um, large. So um, the nose is gonna go there. And you can see now between the nose and the chin is where the mouth's gonna go. But we're not gonna put it here, that's gonna be too low. We're gonna kind of again, split that space and decide, well, that's kind of be right in there somewhere. We'll may have to adjust that later, but basically we're gonna make some lines there. You see where I can kind of look at this drawing now and see an eyes, nose and mouth starting to take its place. Um, generally, I'll give you guys a couple of seconds just to ingest that and see if there's any questions. If you have a question tonight, um, throw it up on the chat. If I don't catch it, Lori will, and she'll let me know. Jeff, I'm going to call it my good friend, yeah. Jen. Jen's mind was blown when you told her that men's ears and noses continue to grow. Uh, her eyes grew to the size of saucers. So you've imparted some very interesting wisdom already this evening. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, I, have, I was just looking at pictures of my... Uh, my great grandfather today, and he, he lived a long time, so his ears were like ginormous. And again, it was my grandfather, so the nose was pretty big too. Um, uh, Johnny's Meat Market at the Capital Market—that's my—that's uh, my great uncle, which his father is who I'm talking about. Um, so, and it, it's really interesting. You know, our features tell tell really great stories too. And so tonight. If I call somebody out on their features, like I talked about Morgan's eyebrows last time, but I feel like those, that is a feature that defines her, um, or not defines her as a person, you know, um, you're more than just your eyebrows, Morgan, um, but defines the person's facial features. And so when you guys, again, if you see my work out there um, out in the world, you can see that I do caricature. And so I try to exaggerate those features. So if I was drawing Morgan, I would give her Groucho Marx's eyebrows. Those were her words, by the way, not mine. Um, but it, would, it, it accentuates the personality and their face. So I do that a lot in my caricature. Um, so when you're drawing tonight, um, look at, see, kind of see what your, your features are. Um, but again, this first round, we're just gonna get them in the right place, in the right size. Then we're gonna go back and really make them look like us. So I'll show you, I'll do a, uh, this is a little, skip into the future here. So this is this is what I'm kind of working on now. And then later on, I'm gonna have this, and this is my reference. So I'm gonna draw somebody else tonight, but that, if I was drawing me, I was gonna go, I'm gonna go from this to this, and then of course I would paint it. Right now I'm just drawing some generic shapes to get, get me to where I need to be. So let's do that. Let's start with the eyes. And each, for each shape, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some separate pieces of paper and draw them bigger so you can see it and then kind of give you a general idea of where those go. The eye is, again, for this part, is super simple. Um, I used to teach kindergarten through fifth grade 
art. Um, I taught later on other places too, but this is this is one of the things I always taught him. I tried to break things down to the simplest shapes so that if you can draw a circle, you can do this. Um, and so we're gonna draw the eyeball as kind of a football shape at first. So watch what I do here. I'm gonna draw it in Sharpie so you see it better. We're gonna go kind of a downward curve and then meet it up with an upward curve to make that football. And don't, do not draw it yet. I'm gonna show you where we're gonna put it. And so what, I want you to watch me to, to draw it first. So we're gonna, that's your eyeball. And then we come over to our drawing. We gotta figure out where it goes. So you can see here we have, we have this line here and this line here. And that's gonna tell us where we're gonna put it. So we're gonna make sure we don't, we don't make it over here on the face because that would be kind of Picasso-like, uh, Google it. Uh, or right here, I'm gonna put it right about there. So we have space here and we're gonna have, we're gonna put it right about the middle over here. We want the same space here and here that we had here and here. Wanna make sure they're not too far apart. I see already in this drawing that I feel like these are too far apart. So um, I'm gonna fix that. Poly tab is forgivable for the most part. Sometimes it's easier just to let it draw it again and then paint over it than to try erase it. You can try erasing it though. I'm gonna bring this guy over for just a little bit. There we go. I like that better. So that's basically where these eyes are gonna go on this particular face. Um, I don't know who I'm drawing tonight, so I'm not sure what it's gonna look like yet anyways. But I'm putting those generic footballs. I can go ahead and go ahead. Um, I said go ahead like 15 times just now. I can go ahead and put the eyeballs in there too. Um, that's, there's your eyes for now. We're going to go ahead and move on. Leave them just where they are. We have, we have two eyes in the right place and the right shape and the right size. We're not worried about eyelids, um, wrinkles. Not that many of us have those. Um, things like that, that kind of makes it look more like us. We'll work on that later. Just right now, we're just working on the size, shape, and place. So if you feel like they're in the right size, shape, and place, um, you're good to go. You can uh, wait for our next step here, which is gonna be the nose. And um, when we're drawing the nose, now, of course, I taught elementary art. So I, I would often get this, this nose that nose, which is fun. And I love the, I love kids drawings, but tonight we're kind of, we're working towards um, a more, a nose that looks more like a, a realistic nose. I love, like, again, I love kids artwork. Don't get me wrong, but we really don't normally see our nostrils like this unless we're looking up in the air. So for tonight, oh gosh, I bumped the tripod. Please, please don't go. <laughs> here's, here's what we're gonna do tonight. So when, you're draw, when I'm drawing a nose, again, I, I base it on the scale of the nose of the person. But so I also, I start out with three very light circles. There's one that creates the middle part of the nose. And then we have the two side parts that are overlapped, overlap that bigger piece. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit closer. Oh, wrong way. Um, that was, it's kind of strange, but that's going to be the nose. Again, wait for me to go ahead and finish drawing this and then we'll put it on the actual um, face. So then once I have that, that's my structural lines. I can then go and say, well, this is going to be that side of the nostril. And if I come down here like this, that's going to be that side. And then I start to have something that kind of looks like a nose and with shading, we're going to have a nose there. Okay, so now, now that we have that knowledge, let's go over to our face. I'll put this up so you guys can see it at the same time. There's our nose. Okay, so I'm gonna draw the middle part of the nose. How big is that gonna be based on your nose? If you're, um, everything's proportionally the same, but if you're younger, you might have a smaller nose, right? And so you're gonna have the sides there And then I'm gonna come in and draw those darker lines to create that shape. 
you know, it comes down right there. It comes right back up. And you can break this down even simpler. You could say, well, that's a, a kind of a C shape and a backward C shape and then kind of a this little curvy U shape there. And I'm not gonna do anything in here. I'm not gonna do a bridge per se of the nose. That's gonna come in later. One of the things when we're drawing, you have what we call hard lines, soft lines, hard shadows and soft shadows. And what that means, if you look at, let me grab a portrait. Hold on, I'll get one out. Here we go, here's a, here's a good one. Okay, this is done by an artist, uh, Mallory Burka. She also um, organizes the festival Art for All, among other things for festival. Um, that's held at the Clay Center when we were able to. Um, this is a good example of hard lines and soft lines. So you see her bridge of her nose. There's not really a line on that shadow. There's more of a shadow right there. It's a shadow, but also there's a soft shadow here and a hard shadow here. So our face is not really made up of lines. So right now we're just kind of creating a map for shadows, really. But that's all be maybe a little bit confusing. We'll just follow along, keep going. Um, we'll talk about it more later. So we have eyes, we have nose, um, and we have a mouth. And so um, a lot of times when we're drawing a mouth, we tend, we, we want to make sure that we're happy and we look happy and all that good stuff. But it's also very difficult to draw a mouth with a smiling set of teeth. And um, I am going to go a different route tonight and not draw a mouth with smiling teeth. I'm going to more or less draw a mouth smiling without teeth. And the way to do that is it's all about the line itself. So um, uh, here's our first, we do this every time. I feel like maybe if you've joined us before, you already know this. I think Morgan will get it. The, there's the, the, the top lip and the mouth is, is shaped by something right here under your nose. Um, does anybody, can anybody raise their hand, tell me what this is right here, what's called under the nose, besides Lori and Morgan, besides Lori and Morgan? Uh, wait, Pearl, I'm, that's probably not your name, Pearl. It's probably your last name or something. You can go ahead and unmute yourself for a second. Do you see him there, Lori? Pearl's raising her hands. Right My now. first name I'm is sure. Pearl. And um, it, it's, isn't it called the Cupid's Bell? Yes, yeah. nice job. Yeah. So, the Cupid's bow right here, uh, I have a mustache and beard so you can't see mine, but it, it creates that shape of that top lip. So that's gonna tell me, let me go back to my own drawing, I can't see what I'm doing. Um, that's gonna tell me where, how much this curves, right? See that little Cupid's bow I just made there? How much is that gonna curve? And then once it's curved, once you have your kind of U-shape um, dictated by your Cupid's bow, you're gonna come down and create that top lip. Now the thickness and the width of that top lip is generally gonna be dictated about uh, when you're looking at yours. But if you look at the eyeball, I'll put this there. The mouth ends about the middle of the eyeball. So I wanna make sure that my mouth ends right about there. So if I put my pencil down at the end of the mouth, it cuts the eyeball in half. Right there, it cuts the eyeball in half, both times. Then, okay, the middle line, and this is where you can really make yourself smile. You can come down here, curve this line here, and come up and see how I'm generically curving it up a little bit to create a smile. You can see that. And I am going a little fast tonight because I had all those technical difficulties I wanted to catch up. So I can slow down a little bit if you need me to. After we get the mouth and ears, we're going to take a little bit of a breather anyways. And I'm going to, Morgan and I are going to pick on everybody and make, them show us, make, us, make you show us your drawing so far. Then this bottom lip, the bottom lip is usually not as big and it curves down more. So I'm going to curve it down more right here. Look, right there like that. See that curve I put in there? And I'm, I'm drawing, I'm not drawing myself tonight, so I'm not really looking at a reference. So mine's gonna be more generic, but again, right now we're just getting shapes anyway, so it's not that big a deal. All right, so um, if you have, um, 
Well, let's just get, let's give a. I'll let everybody get get a little bit caught up because I'm moving pretty fast. And again, if you have questions, just throw them in the chat. Um, again, this is just a simple initial sketch. So if you're having trouble, we'll work it out here in a minute. I can go around and help folks too as we go. This is normally the point in, in the workshop. If we were together, I'd be walking around the room. Um, but we'll do that in just a moment, virtually, of course. So if you do not have, if you have long hair, um, you will not be drawing the ears, of course. Now I will say, if you're a person with long hair and you often put your hair in a ponytail, I would recommend, um, because if we're doing a straight on portrait, which we're doing tonight, you're not gonna see the back of your ponytail. So it's gonna look a little bit strange if you just have kind of just hair right here and nothing else. So if you have a ponytail, what you can kind of do is you can somewhat fake it. And I'll show you what I'm talking about real quick. You could do something like this. where you kind of almost slightly turn your head to the side. But it's still, you're gonna to have to kind of adjust your drawing a little bit if you do that. See, I, I did kind of a side view a little bit. It kind of looks like Barack Obama with a ponytail, but anyways. Um, or you can do, you know, you can bring it down. If you, if, I mean, if you're absolutely identified by the fact that you never, Put your hair down then you can still do that i mean you can just you want to make sure that you put plenty of hair on the top so it doesn't look like you have like a buzz cut so if you have a ponytail you have a part here something like that where you're definitely seeing where your hair comes down it's not just i mean it's not just a, a buzz cut or in this case like alfalfa that's a reference that dates me a little bit probably but um Air, like showing that a little bit, maybe even have like a hair falling down a little bit, maybe, I don't know. That's something you can work out. Just, it's really difficult to draw a buns and ponytails in this situation. Okay, so if you are drawing your ears, um, we always tend to make our ears too big, um, but really, they're really quite, especially if you're straight on. If you're looking straight onto the mirror or your photo reference, your ears are not gonna be that big. But they start at the top of the eyeball and they come down to the bottom of the nose. And it's kind of like a, a half of a heart shape. So watch for this, I'll do this again. I'm gonna curve up like a heart and come back into the head, okay? Curve up to the heart and come all the way down to the bottom of the nose and come back to the head. Jump out there with a curve, come down, back to the head. And again, we will make those adjustments later uh, when we're drawing, when we're actually drawing you. But this drawing, just like I said before, is where we need to be at this moment in time. Uh, we need to uh, be have eyes, nose, mouth, ears, and a head that's generally proportioned correctly. Um, we're in just a few minutes. We're going to go in and actually start making it look like us. Okay. Um, before we do that, um, let's do a quick check in because I've gone pretty fast. Um, who has Oh, there is a question already. The nose, yes. I, mean, I can't see what I'm doing unless I do this. So I, I have that, those three shapes, the circular shapes, then I kind of follow those to make the nose. Um, if what we've done in the past with with leaving yourself muted, we've just kind of done this so I can kind of I can see your name. So if, if you hold yours up as close to your camera as possible like that, I can I can go around and look at them and see how you're doing. If you don't mind to do that right when you get get a second, you don't have to. So I can pin the video and see you better, I think. No, I can't. Let me see what I do here. There we go. Okay. All right. I'm looking. Great job looking around. Anna, can you um, hold you up a little higher? I'm, I'm losing your chin. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. 
Great. Jennifer, where's, where, where's yours? <laughs> she says, no, <laughs> no, I'm not participating in this action. No, it's, oh, there it comes. I persuaded her. Okay, awesome. I like the eyes. It really captured your eyes. No, we'll, we're gonna fix that though. Um, let's see. Who's Amber, I don't think I saw, great. I don't think I saw yours and Kara, I don't think I saw yours. Are you painting already? <laughs> Nice. I love Can you it. See Amber's again. Sorry. Nice. And um, I see um, you guys can probably see this too. Pam. Um, she's holding her up really close. I like. I love the eyes and the hair. I, without seeing it, you can definitely tell it's you. I for because your your screen says Nessa. I'm not sure what that refers to, but that's um, Pam from our parking department. If you if you need. Uh, a parking spot in, in Charleston, that's who you go to, Pam. She does not handle tickets, right? Right, no parking tickets. No kidding, she does, she does. Don't leave your meter unpaid. That's a message from the parking department, folks. Okay, good job, kids. I keep saying, your first name's Pearl, right? Something like that. You are representing our youth tonight. There's not very many um, young ones on tonight. So you guys are represent, re representatives of the, the young people. Her name is Olivia. She's my sister. She decided she wanted to join. Hello. Awesome. Hello, Olivia. Can I see your drawing, Olivia? Excellent. And everybody I'm seeing right now, you did the important things that you need to do is you did the right size, the right shapes, and the most important, the head's big enough. So when you go out there to see your portrait, it's not a, you, it lost in all this. Um, I'm gonna check in with one more person. I wanna move on. June, how we doing? Nice, great job, awesome. Thanks for joining us. I met June yesterday, I took her a kit and she's really, really excited to be a part of this project. She's a West, a West Side resident and uh, just energy, 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 ready to do this, right? June, you can unmute and say hello. Are you having Everybody. fun so far? <laughs> She's going to say you having fun. <laughs> of course. Excellent. All right. Um, we're going to move on to the likeness. And this is the part where I'm not going to be giving as much instruction as just giving a little bit of guidance to what you're gonna do for the next 10, 15 minutes. Um, next 10 or 15 minutes, we're gonna make it look, take, take a look at our reference, take a look at our mirror, and or if you're not doing, if you're not looking at those things, kind of imagine your likeness. You can, uh, you can, you can make things up if you want to. Um, we're gonna take this drawing that we just did. I, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna take this back. This is the drawing that I did the first time around. And I took away some of the structural lines, but I do have just what we talked about. I have the, the footballs, I have the nose shape and the lip shape, and then I have the X shape. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this now. Like, man, that really looks like an alien. Um, but we're gonna get to this point of making it look like us. And we're gonna start with the eyes. Um, our eyes really are um, a really good point of starting what a likeness looks like. I'm reading a message, hold on, sorry. Oh, I've already read that, okay, got it. Okay, so we're gonna talk about eyelids first um, because these footballs are not really the eyelids closing. Uh, there is a place to start. So hopefully you've drawn uh, your, your eyelids light enough that you can actually go over that uh, now. Uh, let me do that, I'm gonna grab a piece of paper. Now I'm, I'm doing this a little bit differently than you guys are, but right, basically what you have is what's in front of you now. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw myself again on this one. Okay, so I'm looking at my reference and I'm going to start with the head shape first. Then we'll, let's do the head shape, then the eye. So you notice that on this drawing here, I'm gonna take my generic head shape and I'm gonna look at the side of my head. Look at this here. If you look at my head, it's not an egg shape. It's a big head. I know that. You don't have to mention it. Um, but it does come in here, right there, and cut back out to create the jawline. So when I do that on my drawing, I'm going to come in from my egg, 
come out to a jaw line and then come back down to create the chin line. And all you guys are doing is drawing this darker on your egg. I'm doing it a little bit differently, but just to show you, it illustrates better what I want you to do. Come in down here. And that looks more like my head shape. Now, again, I haven't, I'm not gonna draw hair, but you can see that I've made room for my hair and my forehead. You're not gonna need as much room for your forehead because I have a five head. Um, my head, forehead's big. So it's not a forehead, it's a five head. Everybody, does everybody get that? It's crickets. There's no laughter, but because you're all muted. I'm sure you guys are all just can't contain it. Howling, yeah. There, I could see it on your faces. Comic genius. Okay, so we have um, this generic egg that would now looks like our head shape. If you have to adjust it, um, if the egg shape is too long, too short, uh, too wide, too tall, you can make that adjustment now. It's better to make it now than to try to fix it later. So if you have a, a short head or a long head, uh, you need to fix that at this point. Um, as we draw the details of our face, we start to notice some of these things, these mistakes that we've made along the way. And I'll tell you, I don't count them as mistakes. It's, it's just navigating your drawing. Um, every single time I do an illustration, when I'm drawing someone's face, I never get it right the first time. Um, I do sketches and then I do other sketches and then do more sketches. But um, we have tonight to do this one and we're gonna do our best. So now let's look at the eyeballs and our eyes are marbles that are stuck into our head. So they're not flat. So we have to kind of make them look not flat. Um, and what we can do there is add shadows and uh, highlights and things like that we're gonna do with the painting. But for the drawing, what we're gonna do is go ahead and draw our eyelids and some of the wrinkles and shapes around the eye that helps create that dimensional quality. So I want you to look at your reference and tell yourself, look, um, ask yourself how much of your pupil is covered by eyelid? Is my eyelids big? Do I have squinty eye, uh, squinty eye, or not squinty, but narrow eyelids? You know, some people eyes have, a, you have a lot more um, wrinkle under the eye, on the side of the eye, what it's called, crow's feet, right? Some people have shots in their forehead to get rid of those wrinkles. Um, we're not, we want to make sure we draw whatever we see on there so we, it looks like us. Now, kids, you guys will not have a lot of under here, but you might still have uh, some wrinkles on this way. Let's go ahead and go in there with this guy. Again, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to draw me. Uh-oh. Okay. Hold on one second. My back. It was... We, when we take a break, I'll have to plug my phone in. It, it really chews the battery up. Okay, come in here on this eyeball. I'm gonna come over, look how I'm coming over the pupil. So my eye is somewhat wide, but it's also my top eyelid's a little more narrow. And then my eyelid, in this particular reference at least, my eyelid's pretty, narrow right there. I'm gonna come down and bring that eyelid down a little bit. And I'm just, see, I'm, I can't really move the camera, but I can do this. You can see that I'm starting to kind of create some additional lines that I'm gonna use just to navigate my painting later. Remember, these are simple portraits. The closest that anybody's gonna to be is to this mural is probably at very, very close, it'll be 15, 20 feet. So if you're thinking about a, a, a 12 foot by 12 or 12 inch by 12 inch portrait that you're seeing it 15 feet away, you don't have to worry about um, painting every nose hair. Um, they're not gonna see it. So um, we're thinking simplistic, simplistic shapes and shadows for this piece. Now, when I come in, I'm gonna really kind of noodle away at this eyeball for a second. I'm gonna kind of create my iris and pupil a little bit. I'm not using shading yet because we're going to use that, do that with painting, but I can kind of mark where some of the shading might be. You know, there's a little bit there. And then see, I'm kind of working around a little bit. Oh, I'm going to plug in. Um, 
working that out a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna um, let you guys work on them. Plug my phone in real quick. I just need an extension. Here we go, got it. And if you feel com comfortable, you can go ahead and, I have this right here. Okay. Um, you can go ahead and work on your second eye. I'm gonna plug my phone in. You guys are doing that. While Jeff is plugging in and y'all are working on your pieces, I am going to do some shameless plugs for the Clay Center and invite everyone to come to the Juliet Art Museum if you're feeling particularly inspired. We have two works right now, uh, two exhibitions on display, Face to Face, which are a series of portraits, which is really ideal for what we're working on right now, but a series of portraits, some self-portraits from our permanent collection. Those are on display in the Juliet Art Museum. We even have an Andy Warhol as part of that collection on display, which is a really, really gorgeous piece. Um, and Kara and some of our other staff have been doing some wonderful behind the scenes, we call it inside look, some virtual tours every Thursday at 1230 on Facebook Live. So you can check those out and see some of the pieces that we've featured thus far. But that exhibit is on display in our largest gallery. In our smaller gallery, we actually have a photography series called Looking at Appalachia. And this is organized by a local Charlestonian, Roger May, who works with artists throughout the Appalachian region. And uh, they're photographing different areas in their towns or their cities or their states. It's a really, really gorgeous exhibit. And that's been on display for a bit now. So we have, I think, another month left of that or so couple months um, and that's in our smaller gallery but we are open to the public right now Friday through Sunday by appointment so we are taking reservations we have little discovery blocks that you can come in and explore in the museum and we're keeping our capacity low only 100 people for the entire facility so you really feel like you have the place to yourself but we invite you to come and check out all of those works while they're on display right now. And like I said, face-to-face -face is really perfect for what we're doing right now, since it is a series of self-portraits that not only of people, we do have some animals. I think the very first portrait that we featured was a cow, right, Kara? I see you're nodding your head. Okay. See, I was paying attention. <laughs> but it's great, and it's really wonderful. We're so lucky at the Clay Center to have this beautiful permanent collection of artwork that we're able to showcase and to share with our community on a regular basis. So this permanent collection that we've been able to show these selections is really, really exciting for us to be able to develop that exhibition and put it out for everyone to see. Thank you, Morgan. I really, I think that um, you know, some of us forget of what a, a gem we have here in Charles in the Clay Center, and especially the art museum. I, of course, I love the science part too, but the art museum is upstairs and you know, people sometimes forget about it. So you know, make an appointment and go over and check out those exhibits. Um, we're gonna continue here with this part of the eye again. Sorry for all the technical difficulties tonight it happens. We're creating that eyelid, those bottom wrinkles, with just a little bit of indication of what that's gonna be. Your iris and your pupil. And I'm gonna go ahead and give myself some information about the eyebrows. Um, our eyebrows, again, are not made up of, you know, a thousand hairs, but it's a shape that the hairs come together to make. So when I'm doing the eyebrow, I'm gonna come up and see where it lies above my eye, first of all. Some of us have like really thin eyebrows that really create a shape above the eye. I have pretty thick eyebrows that are somewhat short, but they do come around the eye like that. There's the second one. Not the second one, the second side. Here's the second one. Really sharp line there. Like look at the angles too. Like look at the angle of your line the line in your eyebrow like that. Look at that, how sharp that line is. It's starting not to look like me, but I'm, I'm get, having fun with the, this eyebrow here. So that's just kind of a sketch. We're gonna use that to paint on. I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm just drawing, giving myself some information. You know, on that, that football now will, will take on a whole different shape of the eye because you're gonna have all these eyelids under the eye. You might wanna go ahead and do some information about the bridge, maybe not. 
Same thing with the nose. We're gonna go under the nose here. And again, I'm gonna keep the nose pretty simple at this point because a lot of that's gonna be done with paint. So I might just do that and just leave it at that for now. The mouth really is going to come back down to making sure that you put it in the right place. And did I have too much space between my nose and my mouth? Did I have too much space between my mouth and my chin? Is it smiling enough? You can bring that line up here, this line up here. Make sure you get that curve in there if you have one. If it's not, I have a mustache, so I, don't, I get to skip that step. If you have, I didn't see a whole lot of folks on here with um, uh, facial hair. When facial hair come, becomes part of that um, last bit of detail, like the glasses, earrings, um, nose rings, lip rings. Am I losing anybody there? Um, so mustache and beard, uh, you can throw in later glasses. You can even wait until the very end of the painting and throw the glasses in after you've painted the face out. But what I am gonna do, because I do have a mustache and beard, I'm gonna kind of put in kind of generically where it's gonna go. You know, what shape is it creating? That's what's important. It's all about the shapes. You know, everything, if so, everything's the right shape and size, you're golden. That's roughly the shape of my beard for now. I'm just kind of scribbling it in. You, this, is, this part is really sketchy. You're just kind of getting the information in there. Where it goes. See, now it kind of looks like my beard a little bit and I got a little bit of an ear here. My ear, put my ear back in. Um, if you have ears on your drawing, you can do, like I'm gonna draw this bigger right here. My ear comes down, I have that ear shape I had. Then you have the, you can kind of repeat that to create the lobe and just kind of create that there. And then you have a curve. What is that called? You may know what that, that piece of the ear is called. Nobody? I don't either. I probably, well, no. Oh. What is it called? I don't know, I was waiting on you to tell me. No, I don't really don't know. I'm not an anatomy teacher. I don't know. I, at one point I had anatomy and, and, and figure drawing in school, but I didn't, I, I don't remember. I We're gonna have Google that. This right here is your, your tragus. What? Your tragus. Okay. This piece right here. Yeah, the little yeah. thingy. Yeah, it's the little thing is the tragus. Who said, who's saying that, Morgan? Liz Yeager. Liz Yeager, oh. yeah. Yeah, it's your tragus, oh. I have it pierced. I was gonna say, do you know because it's a piercing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that makes I think, sense. Is that the one that people get pierced that's supposed to help with migraines? I don't. Yes. Uh, I don't. Yes. I don't. Uh, I don't. Think so. Brandon from the office says that's that is accurate. She, you should try that. Let's get into Lori's medical history. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, but you might have to this. We're gonna have this all figured out. It's gonna be fine. You're welcome. All right, so I better keep plugging away. Um, now, right now, I'm, I'm bald. I never want to be this, but if it's okay, it, if I was, I'm still, you know, still person. Um, I'm gonna, look what I'm doing here. So I am just marking in the shape of what my hair's doing in this particular moment. And again, my forehead really is that big in real life. So I'm gonna leave that and look at that shape. So. I'm looking at the side of my hair. What is it doing here? And it comes around here and there's all these like crazy bangs and all that that happens up here. But then it comes back down. So I'm looking at overall shape. Now, again, if your hair is close to your head, you're not gonna make that much of a shape there. If you have, um, if you pull your hair up a lot then you're gonna create that shape, hopefully you left room for it. Um, this is the part where we really make, it's really starting to look like you. Um, and we have, believe it or not, we're halfway through, over halfway through already. Um, and again, part of that's my fault because of technical difficulties, but this is the part where I really give you your time without me um, kind of talking at you to really work on cleaning up your drawing, finishing your drawing before we transfer over to our, transition over to our painting portion. Um, so even though we're running a little bit behind, I'm gonna give you guys about maybe five, 10 minutes um, and I'm going to kind of be quiet. If, um, if anybody wants to hold theirs up, that's fine. But we're going to just work on our drawings for a few minutes by ourselves. And I'm going 
I'm not going to talk. Unless somebody holds theirs up, of course. Um, nice job. Um, I'm seeing, oh, what was her name? Olivia? Is that right? No. Yes? Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at that drawing. Can we pin that drawing? Pearl? Lucia, I just, I just saw it for a second. Let's, let's give everybody a few minutes and then we'll start, we'll, we'll start holding them up and pinning them and sharing. So um, go ahead and work on yours. If you're done and ready to paint, just kind of chill out for a second, get a drink um, of water uh, <laughs> or something else, I guess, if you want to. Um, I'm not judging. Liz is having a really good time, I can tell. She, I, yeah, yeah, you're having a good time, okay. I'm glad. <laughs> I wish I could read lips. I'm not gonna ask you to unmute. I think it might not be safe. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna shut up and let you guys draw just for a few minutes and we'll come back. I'm gonna, if you have finished your drawing, go ahead and get your paints out and your palette or your, sorry, your paints and your water and your brushes. Yeah. Didn't work. Mm. Yeah, interesting. <clears throat> yeah. We have pets showing up. Morgan, which one of the clan is that? This is Oliver. He is the smallest, weighing in at a hefty six pounds, but he is also the alpha, which is, you know, being five foot one, I appreciate that about him. <laughs> uh, and we have actually his brother. I'll grab another one. He is leaning on me. Uh, we call them the twin terrors. Uh, so these are our rescue puppies from, they're not puppies anymore, they're about two now, but from the Canal Charleston Humane Association. If you don't have a furry friend in your life and you're looking for one, they are obviously a wonderful organization in our community. Uh, and Jeff, they would actually like to know if pets are allowed to be included in the mural or if this is for people only. <laughs> You really put me on the spot. Um, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Uh, we I'm just have, kidding. Um, <laughs> I, I actually, um, we had a, a request from somebody to, to make themselves look like um, a cat. Oh. You know, cat ears and, and um, I told them no. Yeah, this is about the people. So, it totally <laughs> makes sense, yeah. It absolutely makes uh, sense. Now, if we're, if we're doing a dog park for the mural, or mural for the dog park, maybe then we would need to throw some of these guys in. But for I this, I think you, it's I, all about the people. I, I hope you, you guys appreciate dry sense of humor tonight. <laughs> um, so, um, I'm seeing a lot of people ready to paint. So let's do real quick, let's do a real quick um, roundup. Um, hold your, your drawings up for a final check if you want to, you don't have to. And when I say check, I'm not gonna really critique them. I just wanna see if there's anything we can like, just small little tweaks. Now, um, and just keep, if you don't mind, keep them held up there. I know it's kind of awkward. Just keep them right there where they are, like right where, yeah, Kara has hers up. How do I pin them? Mm-hmm. 
That's why. That's why. It's okay. I can see him pretty well. You have to ask me to chat with him instead of pinning him. No, that's okay. I can see him pretty well. Okay. Um, Olivia and Pearl. That, that's great. I'm going to going across the bar here. Um, I think it's Liz and her friend. The next one. Um, yeah, there's Olivia's. Okay, it's coming back up there. Nice job. Okay, great. Um, Anna, do we do we get to see yours yet or no? We're gonna be a surprise. She's frozen, I think. Oh, there it is. Okay, excellent. Pull, bring it up a little bit so I can see the the nose and the chin. Oh, I'm, my internet's slow. Okay, awesome. Going across, Danita, you had a question about the nose. Can you put it a little bit closer so I can see? Or you can unmute if you need to ask something. We're losing. Okay, there we go. I struggled with the nose, but we'll okay. just take it. Well, I think your nose, What I think what your, your nose is a little bit too far down on your face. So okay. maybe we just bring it back up a little bit when you do the painting. Okay. You can kind of paint it back out. Excellent. Kara, I don't think I, I didn't see yours yet. Okay, you're good. You're good to go. Pam, looking great. Pam, you're kind of, are you stylizing yours a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it. A little, just a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, June. June, and remind me again um, of your assistant's name, June. You can unmute Vanessa. it. Vanessa, that's right. I'm sorry, Vanessa. I've forgotten. <laughs> oh. June looks great. I love it. Thank I'm you. I'm so glad you did this. And Vanessa, I didn't see yours. It, where'd she go? There she is. All right. I was wondering how you're going to do your hair, if you're going to have it kind of pulled up or what you're going to do. Okay, awesome. I'm going to have it pulled up. Okay, cool. Uh, where, where is it? Is it Arcana? Is that your name? Did I say that right? Yeah. Oh, it looks great. Awesome. Um, it looks like I hope that I'm wrong. Are you are is yours on the glossy side? It's not, is it? No. Okay, good. Um, Amber, do we get to see it yet? Awesome. And are you going to have your hair down, Amber? So um, those of you that are going to have your hair down, can I, can I show you something real quick here? What we've done in the past with some of these is because we're cutting these out, you can see here, um, I, we're not going to have necks and shoulders. We're just going to have floating heads. So if you have long hair, you might want to just continue your hair around as if you don't have a neck. It's kind of weird and creepy, but it, it makes more sense when we cut them out. Um, uh, Lucia, is that, is that right? Am I looking at theirs next? We haven't seen yours yet, I don't think. Oh, wow, okay, good, nice. Great job. Uh, Jennifer. Oh, wait, I have another one from Lucia too. Oh, got it, there it is. Okay, cool, I like it. Uh, Jennifer, wait, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I think the only thing I would say is when you go, your well, there's two things then if you point at that. Um, your eyebrows are going, right now they're going straight across, but you have nice angles in your eyebrows. So bring them up a little bit and around. And then your, I think you're pointing at your nose. Your nose may, it's hard to tell in this screen. It's, I feel like I my nose is too small. I've got to make it bigger, I think. Nose yes, make your nose wider, a little bit wider. It's too small. Thanks. Yes. See, you knew, you got it. Um, I have it on the screen, it's just S-O-H-A. Is that Soha? Yes, okay. Uh, yes. I think it looks great. It, 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 it looks, do you think it's a good likeness? I think it's a great likeness. Yeah, you're on it, you're on it. Anybody else wanna share before we move on? I'll share, no? and 
I'll share and I'll give full disclosure that my husband creeps behind me and saw how horrible mine was and felt badly for me knowing how bad my first one was. So I attempted my own and this is after he used half of the eraser and fixed it. So nice. So that's the Ben Robinson like edition. I mean, I try to do it justice in the painting phase. Well, and that's a great point, Morgan. There's a lot you can fix in the painting stage that if you have some issues, um, you can kind of make those adjustments in the painting. Um, in front of me here, um, I kind of did a really quick sketch that I'm gonna use as our painting sample tonight. Um, we're gonna now transition into the painting. We, we really are gonna need to do that because of our time. I will say that during the painting session, there's a certain point where it's just kind of working away at the painting that I'll leave, you guys, we can leave. You know, um, so eight o'clock hits or you get to the point where you, you think I've got this, that's fine. Um, each of you have a set of paints that came in little two ounce containers and each of you have a color. Now, again, remember, they're going to be have, we're going to have those color fields behind Martin, Dr. King, there he is. So each of you have a number, a color number you're going to be using you don't have those numbers. You either have a purple or a blue or a green or a blue green. Um, but you do have what's called the value system for your colors. So I'm using green tonight and I have the lightest green and I have the darkest green. So when we're talking about value. I'm going to refer to those as number one is the lightest, number five is the darkest. So I'm going to be using those numbers tonight. If I say you might want to use a number one or a number two, then I'm talking about the lightest two colors. Okay, you see those better there. Now they're really close together, one and two especially. But you might just want to arrange your paints in value order. And you can go ahead and carefully snap off those lids. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the painting because we need to. I get your thumbs a little bit with a little bit of paint on them, but. And instead of using a palette, I've just been using them straight out of the container and mixing right on the painting. You can do whatever you want. If you have a little piece of a paper plate or something and want to make a palette, that's fine. I'm going to go grab that. Otherwise, I just kind of mix on the painting. Um, again, these are simple paintings you're going to be seeing from a long distance. So you don't have to worry too much about making these perfect paintings. These are simple paintings. Make and keep them pretty rough. All right, back to my my sketch, I have my water. I hope you remember to make a water dish. Uh, if you don't, you might want to run and get that real quick and make sure you have paper towels and make in case you gotta, <laughs> that's all like people leaving the screens. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, yeah. Do they all have these self-portraits or no. really into this? Could they do their whole family? Yeah, so that's a great question. Lori, uh, you guys probably cannot hear Lori, but she had a great question. So. The initial concept for this piece was um, a reflection of ourselves and our community. So it was kind of assumed that these would be self-portraits. Um, and But we have had um, several people do a second and a third portrait and they've often done um, family members, um, family members that have passed. Um, you know, it would be really cool if somebody drew their ancestor that was a really cool painter, muralist. I don't know, just, well, just I was throwing also it out there. thinking that the um, Yost family would be really cute on there. Yeah. yeah. So you can do that. You guys have that option. If you want to come get another kit from us, you can. Um, when you drop off your paintings, we'll talk about that later. There's always going to be kits at Martin Luther King Center most of the time. Uh, if not, you can always call me. I'll get you one. But yeah, and you can even... Um, if you paint them the same color as yours, I'm not going to guarantee we can put them beside each other, but we'll try our best. Um, so yeah, that's a great question, a great comment, Lori. You can do that. Um, generally, we're, we're referring to them as self-portraits, but you know we have a couple tributes snuck in there. We're not going to care too much. Uh, we have had one. Uh, we've had some great stories. This this mural has given us some great stories. We did have a young lady uh, who lost her sister to drug addiction. And she did an amazing portrait of her uh, deceased sister. And it was a real uh, touching tribute to that. Um, so we've, that has happened. And um, so, yes, as long as they're human. <laughs> okay, 
We're going to have to do like a dog and cat mural now that I've said all this. Like, I'm people are going to think I'm anti pet. I know, I'd say you. I, yeah, I'm anti cat also. I hold your feet to the fire on this one, Pearson. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we don't have enough murals. We can, it's just another one on there. It's fine. It's dog fine. and cat mural. Tomorrow we'll work on it. All right, I'm in. There you go. That's fine. <laughs> all right. Um, and they, Morgan just told me on a private message that Play Center's funding it. So that's awesome. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll start picking up those pennies <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. No, it's good. We, you know, we have really good support for public art in Charleston. It's, and it's really because of the support the community gives us for public art. Um, and we, 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 we do often have projects that need funding, but we've also done really well at funding, pro getting projects funded. Um, we have some great, amazing projects happening this summer and this fall that you'll start to see uh, pop up around the city. And with uh, some great funders and some great support from our community and our mayor and our, our, our city council. Um, it, people really appreciate public art. I'm, I'm happy to be in a position I am of, of making, helping make it happen in Charleston. So for my hometown, it's a pretty cool thing. Okay, so your foam brush is in your kit. If you have other brushes, that's fine. I use it for the initial covering of the skin tone. Now, our skins are all different colors. Um, I still recommend using the lighter tones for the skin tone so you can go back in later and add details that are darker and lighter. So you wanna base your mid tone or your skin tone on probably a one, two or a three, even if you have darker skin, if you use a five, it's gonna be pretty dark, if you can see that. I mean, it's dark. Um, so I would use a one, two, or a three. I would, I mean, most of you, I would say one or two. Um, and we're gonna lay that in without losing our drawing. What I mean by losing our drawing is you wanna make sure that when you're covering your first pass of skin tone, that you're not covering your, draw, your important parts of your drawing up, okay? So I'm gonna take a little bit of paint on the brush. It really doesn't take much paint. And then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna, I have, I have soaked the, the sponge brush with water because this poly tab really kind of soaks up the paint. And I'm gonna come across here like this. Make sure it's opaque. What does opaque mean, Olivia? Libby says she doesn't know, but I know. I know. Oh, well, then you can, oh, take a shot. Doesn't it mean that it can like cover things? Like not yeah. transparent? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the opposite of transparent. So transparent <laughs> means that you can see through it. Opaque means that you cannot see through it. So transparent is a window, opaque is a door. Um, you wanna make sure that your paint is relatively opaque but also making sure that you do not lose your drawing. You can add water, if you see there, I'm adding water. But if you add too much water, it's too transparent. If you add not enough water, you may lose your drawing. So be careful, especially going around those features, making sure if you need to um, use the smaller brush if you have to, if you want to. You, brush is up to you. I use the foam brushes because it covers your areas quicker in a hurry. Make sure you get it done, get it done, get it done. And, you know, sometimes what I'll do is if I'm going over some of the line work is I'll actually add a little, little water and make it opaque. I'm sorry, confusing. Add a little bit of water and make it transparent. Kind of going over everything. Still see my drawing though. I'm gonna pull up. Cause I can go back in and make it more opaque later. What I'll make sure when you guys, when you come in, when these come in, make sure, I wanna make sure that they're not transparent because they won't be the right value for the the drawing for the um the mural let me give you show you a couple samples so just lay in your skin tone just like that you can cover up the ears too i just didn't do it yet you can see here uh, uh, samples up delay is that a delay there it is or see I, that's a little bit too light that's a little bit better You wanna make sure that the value of your painting is the correct value. So you do want to get a value. So even if you, even if you add water to your paintbrush, 
you want to make sure that later on you go back in and cover some of those lighter values. If it looks lighter than a one, you need to cover up a little bit. Does that make sense? Up, uh, yes, mostly. My computer screen's frozen. They're all focused. I thought for sure it was frozen. It's just focused. The great thing about Polytab and this kind of paint is that you can you can go over it and over it and over it and over it. So if you make a mistake, you can let it dry and just go back over it. Um, the other thing too is this is latex acrylic. And what that means is basically it's house paint, um, a, a form of house. So it's if you're uh, you do not want paint on, you might want to be careful. It, I mean, obviously we're just kind of working on a desk, so it's not like we're slopping it around, but be careful with that. I'm leaving the eyes white for now. Um, I will say this, remember, nothing on the painting is a is lighter than a value one. So nothing will be white. Let me say that again, nothing will be white because of the way we're doing the, the mural. If we had a bunch of white for our eyes, it would kind of be kind of strange contrast. Um, so when I go to do the eyes, I'm gonna cover it up with one which kind of, it, it, it kind of breaks some rules of, of painting. You, you want to have a lot of contrast of value and contrast of these simple. So we're not going to, we don't want a whole lot of contrast. Um, the contrast is really going to be coming in the, in the end when you do your line. And we'll talk about that later. Some of this we're not going to be able to do tonight because of the drying time. So I'm going to kind of show you tell you what we're going to do and you can kind of do it later. I can guarantee you that we're not going to finish our paintings in this time frame. And you can work on the painting half. So um, you can take that time if you want to, just make sure your paints do not dry out. I probably should say this more often than I have already. Be sure, be sure, be sure to return these paintings to us. As much as your experiences tonight, we want to make sure that you, your paintings get back to us. Yeah, you can bring them. Yeah, there's two spots you can bring the paintings back to, uh, whatever's convenient for you. There's the Martin Luther King Center, which is at 314 Donnelly Street, which most of you've been to because you picked up supplies. Or you can come here to the City Service Center and you can come and drop your painting off to the planning department, which is pretty easy to find in the City Service Center if you've never been here. You can park on McFarland Street on um, the city service center is actually on Courier, uh, but you can park on McFarland and, and run in real quick and they'll, uh, they'll take your portrait, uh, making sure your name's on the back, of course. And I'll send all this out in an email. I'm just kind of re reiterating the fact that we've got to make sure we get these back uh, mm -hmm. because we want to make sure not only do you have this experience, but you have your part of this mural, okay? So uh, yeah, I think that uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a couple of things tonight because we're really, uh, we're at the half hour mark. We're really running out of time, but I'll show you a couple of things that you guys can work on later um, and tomorrow, uh, Saturday, Sunday. And again, if you need to take a week to work on it, that's fine. But just uh, make sure uh, you get back to us. Um, and if you have any trouble getting back to us, give us a call. Uh, give me a call, my cell phones and all the emails. Um, I work from home. Uh, I don't come back to the center that often, but I'm working on the King portrait right now. So I'm here sometimes. Okay. Once you have your face painted in, um, some of you might actually take advantage of it being wet because you can actually blend the paint while it's wet. Like for example, for this, this, person that I'm painting right now, I might go in now and take a three with the smaller brush, the blue brush that I gave you guys, and start to create some of those shadows. I lay it down pretty thick like that, or pretty dark like that, and then take some water and blend it out. Blend it out. Water is a great way of blending it. If you get too much on there, you can dab it with your paper towel. See how I'm creating the, the bridge of her nose? I'm laying in dark and then taking water 
and blending it out. Now, if I get it too dark, I can just add more light paint once it dries a little bit because I have, in fact, put too much paint down. So that's the next step. Once you have your skin tone in, you're going to go in and create some shadows. Remember those hard shadows and soft shadows? Looking at your face, you might have a, a really hard shadow under your nose. You might even be might even be like a dark, dark, you know, right there like that. Oh, this is really wet. It's okay. You might have a harsh shadow there and I'm gonna have to clean up a little bit because it's too dark. I'll let that dry and fix that. Do you see I made like a really harsh shadow under her nose? And then the eyebrows, you know, your hair and eyebrows, if your hair, if you have dark hair or dark eyebrows, you can go into with that number five, the darkest dark. And go ahead and look at how I knocked that in really quickly. Because again, this are, these are very simple portraits. They're not going, you're not going to paint every eyebrow and um, especially not the eyelashes. Those eyelashes can get really generic if you don't, if you're not careful. You want to make sure you're just going to create in the shape of the eyelash. And it's really not individual lines. It's more of a shape. And if you paint something dark, you can always go back in and let it dry and paint the lighter part. See, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint her iris and pupil dark right now. I might go back in later and add some lighter tones to it to kind of pop it out. You see, I'm keeping it really simple. And also because these are seen from far away, what I've asked people to do too, is go in with your darkest dark and really chisel out some of the line work, some of it, not all of it. And if it gets too harsh, you can go back over it. See, I'm gonna, I'm putting in some line work on her hair. I'm not sure what color her hair is gonna be yet, but I'm just kind of, I'm noodling away at it and kind of chatting at the same time. You guys can do your own thing, making sure you go back in there, see her eye, her whites of her eyes are a little bit too white still, but, but I'm starting to really make her look like somebody. I'm not sure who this is, but it's just somebody. And kind of adding shadows, soft shadows, light shadows. You can blend by either adding a little bit of water or a little bit of paint together while it's wet. You can use paper towel if you get too much paint on it. If you make a mistake, just let it dry. Um, if you're working on it tomorrow and you're working on it and you make a mistake and you need to take a hair dryer to it, I do that a lot. I'm doing good. Uh, I'm sure as I went through that really quickly in terms of the painting, um, you have questions though in the chat, or if you need uh, to raise your hand and unmute yourself for a second, that's fine too. Um, but basically this is the part where we're just going to go, we're going, you know, we're creating the shadows, highlights. You can add highlights. If you have a dark area, you can add a lighter tone to it. There, he's starting to come together there a little bit. And all that is, you can see, and get it a little closer, just light and dark, looking at the shapes. If you have a photograph of yourself or a mirror, look at those shadows. What are those shadows doing? And you're not going to, you know, again, you're not going to get every detail because you're going to see this from 30, 20, 30, 15 feet away. Morgan, what are some of the struggles and challenges that at that you have seen even just your own experience or been on two of these workshops now that you see um, that you might identify with or see people uh, struggling with? Yeah, I think <laughs> proportions is always a hard struggle. I mean, I think when we picture ourselves one way and then looking, even if you're looking at a photo, there may be areas of insecurity a lot of the time that you want to either exaggerate or reduce based on your own impression of yourself. And I think for us inexperienced artists, the shading and the shadows and being able to incorporate those to really make the portrait look three dimensional mm -hmm. can be challenging. But like you said, I think what really helps is looking at a variety of photos, even if you just take some selfies and things like that and see how the light may naturally fall under your cheekbones or on the, on the sides of your nose, under your chin to really highlight those features. Um, those have been challenging for me. And I think, I mean, I'm always like a bigger is better type of person. So I tend to exaggerate all of my features. I mean, I like to, 
when I look in the mirror, I feel like a Mr. Potato Head. So like everything is just like this really exaggerated, like the guy brows, the guys, the nose, the mouth. And I feel like I put that on the page because I have this big personality as well. Uh, so I always end up looking almost like a cartoon character or a caricature right. rather than a portrait, which isn't bad. I'm, I'm totally fine with that because I think it's pretty representative of my personality as well. <laughs> but I do think that that sometimes our inner view of ourselves putting that on paper is, is really difficult. I, I totally agree. I think that this, again, is the reason why I exaggerate things. I think that our facial features really tell a story. You can tell a lot of stories uh, through a person's face. And going back to what she said about the shading, and that can be a challenge. And I've, I've mentioned a couple of ways of doing it, but also it, it, it's easier, easy, easy just to hear me say it, but then to try to do it, it's a little bit different. So I want to do this again here. I'm going to lay down a three right on this jawline here. And then I'm going to take a little bit of water and just kind of smooth it out and bring it around here. I'm smoothing it out a little bit there. See how it's kind of blending it together. And then for the cheekbone, while it's still wet, I might come in and add a number two and chisel that cheek back out. So I'm just, it's really just what we call pushing and pulling, pushing the darks back, pulling your lights out. So if you have a highlight on your nose or your forehead, you wanna pop that out. And if you have a shadow, you wanna make sure you push that back. And we do that by either adding value or adding light, adding dark, adding light, um, pushing and pulling that face until it kind of looks like you, first of all. Um, and it kind of looks a little bit dimensional or if you wanna make it somewhat simple, again, if it looks kind of cartoony, that's fine too. Um, these, these are yours, these are your portraits. This is what you are offering to us as your portrait for this mural. Um, I've only been a guide. Uh, I hope what I've said tonight is just more of tips um, and help. You can kind of go on your own now and make it your own. It's more important to me that you guys, uh, that you feel like you've done something. You know, you've done, you've done you, you've made a portrait that you're happy with. Then that make sure that you, instead of following any kind of direction I've given, if I've helped, that's great. But if you, if you have to go off on your own and do some things, that's awesome too. I'm oh, doing good. Okay. Um, anybody want to share? And I know we're, if you're doing it right, you're, you're probably not anywhere close to being done yet. So um, I encourage you to work on these later tonight or tomorrow or over the weekend, whatever else. Oh, the Jones. I just I just saw you pop yours up. Hold on one second. My screen's frozen. I'm sorry. Hold on one sec. Ms. Yours. I'll come over there. Let's go to Lori's computer. Got my mask on. Okay. Alright. They can hear me. Yeah, nice job, Jones. And I know you're just not there yet, but when you get to your eyeballs, make sure you make those a little bit darker value. And the hair, your hair um, is, you have um, nice value in your hair to make sure you capture that. Um, I just saw Olivia and Pearl. Olivia, um, make sure um, you're careful not to lose your drawing. So what I mean by that is you had a really nice drawing. Make sure that you're not making your lines too thick on your eyes and your nose, that it loses the, the thickness of the pencil line. So you can make them thinner by going back in with the lighter paint and fixing those things. So just make sure you don't make, you're not making your lines too thick, if that makes sense. It looks great though, I love it. Pearl, can we see yours or are you, you're not ready yet? It, can you bring it down a little bit or is it just me? I don't like mine too much yet. <laughs> okay, that's fine. You had a really great drawing, so just take your time. Remember again, you do not have to finish this at eight o'clock tonight. You have the time, so you have no reason. You have, there's no reason for you to rush. You don't have to do that. Anybody else? 
I'm going over to Lori's computer because mine's freezing up again. Hey, Anna, can you hold yours up again? Yeah. You mind? Okay. Sorry, I had all kinds of technical issues tonight. Um, Anna, can I see yours again? Oh, I hate that. Yes, I love it. Are you gonna make your hair long? Awesome. That should take away the echo. Anybody else? Jennifer. Yeah, the eyebrows have better angles now, don't you think? I think so. They're still a work in progress, but I definitely think that they are better. I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you, Jen. Defer. Can you hear me now? There it is. Say it again. Now we have. No, I definitely think the eyebrows have made an improvement. Thank awesome. you for your feedback on that. Lucia, looking great. I love that you took a chance on the smile. I think it worked out. Great job. Yes, let that dry a little bit, Lucia, or that's not Lucia's now, I'm sure, but let that dry a little bit, it's looking, looking great. While we're all working, I'll remind some of our younger participants and anybody who may have kids, grandkids, siblings, that uh, Art for All is going to be taking place again this year as part of Festival. Uh, it's a kids juried art exhibition and we partner with Festival at the Clay Center to do um, an amazing exhibition. We didn't get to have it last year, so I'm looking forward to being able to do it this year. But submissions can be a project, a project that you've done at the house. The exhibition will take place June 13th through the 27th, so part of Festival Charleston. And you have a submission deadline of May 28th. So you still have a couple of months. It's for pre-K through sixth grade students. Um, and there's going to be a whole during process. It's a really wonderful way to get your artwork out to the public and to have a fun project to work on, maybe over spring break or as school is winding down as you're home. And it's a great partnership that the Clay Center has with Festival's uh, Neighborhood Arts Initiative. So excited to see the talented artwork. I think Sylvia has been in that on display several times. So excited to see what she submits this year. But we have some really amazing talent, not only in our adults, but in our, our kids and students in Charleston and in the Kanawha Valley. So we're always really see it in action and on display at the Clay Center. Yeah, I think I agree. And um, my, my daughter has, has been part of that show since she was three years old and she's now 10. And I mean, we always tell her it's not about the award, it's about sharing your art. And she's really, um, it's been some of my, my, my most favorite proud dad moments have been part of that show and watching her face uh, as she won a couple times again it's not that's not important but as she shared her work it was proud of it and was honored for that um it was you know, I, I recall the very first time she entered she in, she was three years old and she entered a portrait of elton john and elton john was coming to charleston and she she was very clear about the fact that she wanted to give the painting to elton john and we were just going to make that happen 
and I didn't even have tickets to go to the concert. So we bought tickets to go to the concert. And uh, we had to explain though to her that it, we weren't going to be able to actually see him to give him the painting, but um, uh, it was fun for her. And, and she's a lifetime fan of Elton John now. And she just, uh, she, you know, like so many kids, like I said, I taught for a long time and watching kids share their art. And I always tell them in each class, the most important thing we can do with our art is what, and that's share it. And that's exactly what we're doing here tonight. Um, and we're not kids anymore. Some of us are not kids anymore, um, but we continue to make art. We can um, continue to make art and um, we'll do that. Absolutely. I think it's a wonderful outlet. And I just saw Chris Kessel actually shared the other day. It's like, I used to draw every day. What happened to that? I need to get back into it. It's a great stress reliever. It's a great brain break during the day if you're having a hard day or if you need a little break for creativity during meetings, even if you're just doodling on uh, on your notes like I do during meetings. Don't tell me, Kara, but uh, you'll see me doing that quite a bit. Um, but another shameless plug for the Clay Center, we are going to be having our summer camps again this summer. I'm very excited about that. And as I'll reiterate what Jeff said, we always have uh, an art camp as part of our summer camp programming. And being able to see kids who come in and are a little hesitant, are lacking a little bit of the confidence, but really enjoy art to see them work through a, pro a project throughout the week of the camp and to learn skills and to build upon that natural talent and that natural joy that they have is so rewarding uh, to be part of the Clay Center. So we're looking forward to announcing those camps later on this month and having the kids back in the center again this summer. Uh, it's really wonderful. I feel very, very blessed as Jeff said, we're really fortunate to have a gym like the Clay Center in our community. And I feel incredibly honored to work there and to be able to be part of those aha moments and those confidence building moments for so many youth and adults in our community. So very, very proud of the work that we do there. I'm very proud of the work that the city is doing, of course, led by Jeff and all of the public art that we're bringing and access to the arts and arts education and participation in the arts uh, through project, projects just like this. I, I totally agree. And, um, you know, I, a couple of years ago, I taught those summer camps and we broke it down. We, we focused on a different artist each month or whatever it was, not each month, each day. I'm sorry. Um, we did, but we did kind of some artists that were more obscure and some that were more, um, known. We did some West Virginia artists like Blanche Lazell. Uh, we did Jim Henson one day, um, because that he's amazing in his imagination. And uh, we did Frida Kahlo one day. Uh, we, were, we did a Frida Kahlo portrait and we made uh, flowers out of paper tissue. And we even did the eyebrow, you know. Um, uh, I've got some great photos of, of the kids there doing that. And um, it's, it, it's a great outlet for not just the science, but the arts, of course. And um, it's just, I hope we can all get back to being together and going and doing things and, and experiencing the arts, all the arts. Um, we all miss the yeah. as well. And not just for kids, we've had so uh, our very own Charleston's uh, Ellie Shaw there, who does uh, adult watercolor classes pretty often. So that's a lot of fun as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's so many, we have, we do, Charleston really does have a lot of uh, creative outlets for adults. And I hope that this experience, um, kind of taps into your childhood wonderment of uh, your imagination and working as an, uh, you know, a child artist. I think it was a Picasso that said that we're all artists as children, uh, but just some of us grow up and some of us don't. Or there's some, there's a quote like that from Pablo Picasso and I'm sure I just really ruined it. Um, I should probably know it, but uh, I think I used to. Uh, you can Google it. I should have Googled it before this workshop and, and sounded a lot smarter than I am right now. Um, we are wrapping up. Um, you do not have to clean up. Uh, this is not in the class. You don't have to, you know, we don't have to stop. You don't have to stop. Um, we, you can continue tonight, work on it as long as you need to. Um, we, we do want you to bring those back to us um, in a, a week or so. Uh, we wanna make sure we get those back. It's really important that we have these numbers and we, we see your work and you're part of this really important mural. Um, it's historic. I would even go as far as it's historic. It's the largest mural that we've done in Charleston. It's participation mural, uh, a participation mural. 
It might be the largest in a lot of places. We don't know that for sure. We can't say that officially, but we are going to um, get some national exposure for this mural. Um, and we're excited to be part of this process with you guys doing this. And um, when I say national exposure, I mean that this mural is gonna be worked on by other folks around the country, not just from West Virginia. And so we're, our, our reach, our collective reach for this piece is just phenomenal. And it's because of people that really care about this project and what we're, what we're trying to do as a community. Last minute questions before we start showing them off one last time. All right, before we sign off for tonight, um, let's take a look. Anybody want to throw theirs up? I better come over there. I, I want to show mine, but it's too wet and it's going to start dripping. Oh, that's a great point. Yeah, if it's too wet, we can just show us later. I'm coming over to Lori's real quick. Mine's freezing up again. Uh, I saw Pam's holding hers up. Pam, where are you at? Oh, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, nice job. Olivia, you need to let it dry a little bit, I think, too. Uh, is it Soha? Soha? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Um, the only thing I would say is under your chin, maybe add a little bit of paint so when we cut it out, we, get, we won't have a weird space there. That's just a technical thing. Carl, let me see that again. It's just too wet. Don't, don't, don't let us get it, it fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good. good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really looking good. good. Who's that right there? Is that, is that NASA? NASA? No, that's, no, that's Poindexter. Poindexter. Have we seen this at all tonight? Nice job. Oh, yeah. You couldn't pick up the first thing earlier. I know this. Now that you're going to be good. Okay, there you go. It may go somebody on that. June, are you ready to show us, Vanessa? All right, June. Looking good. Yeah, let it dry a little bit and cover it up. Keep, keep working at it. June, uh, can you unmute uh, uh, Vanessa? Can Vanessa, you, 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 you know, know help out? We were, we were talking yesterday. I was going to ask her, I was say at the end of it, we'll see how you did and how you, how you felt about doing it. Are you talking to you? You said talking about Vanessa. Now, now, how do you think, <laughs> how do you think, how do you think, how do you think it went, June? I can't get my blue eyes. He said, how do you, he said, how do you think it went? Fine. Good. Good. Did you have fun? You know he's talking to me, right? It's sick. It's sick. That's all right. All right. Uh, oh, Leah, when that was All right. Uh, close. Yeah, just keep working. Work. Make sure it doesn't get light on it. Yeah. Just keep working on it. Hello. I'm not muted. All right. Well, I think we're going to sign off here in just a minute. Thank you all so much for participating. Morgan, thank you for co-hosting and uh, navigating this with us. Please. Thank you please. so much. Let me jump over to mine. I was just going to turn this video on. Okay. Thank you guys for um, participating and being patient with our technical issues, my technical issues tonight. Um, and yeah, just bring them back. You guys did great. I hope you had a good time. I hope you feel good about what you did tonight. I hope maybe you have tapped, we've tapped into something you had done for a while and you're really glad you did. Anybody last thoughts? Three minutes. Anybody want to say anything? I just want to thank you. Oh, Anna, can you unmute? I believe I think I've used it. All right. Am I?
Can you hear me? She unmuted. I can hear you, Anna. Oh, I, I thought she was trying to say something. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. I just want to thank you, oh, Jen, she is trying Morgan, to say something. everybody. Uh, it, is, uh, oh, is. it has been a very, very nice, wonderful experience. And thank you for um, creating this. Um, I think it's going to be awesome mural. Um, thank you for honoring Martin Luther King. And um, I really love this afternoon, sharing all, everything with uh, you all. And uh, we uh, hope that we can continue promoting art and participating in art projects to improve and embellish our community, right? Yeah. Um, I just, you know, again, I don't, I don't want to embarrass you, but I think it's, it was so great for you to join us tonight. And, um, and it's not just because of your family, uh, although we, we, we all think that we're amazing parts of our history and, and art, but because of you and because you're here tonight, um, that you've taken time out of your schedule and used your, um, yours, your talents to make a piece of art. And we appreciate that as well. And so thank you all. Um, Continue to support public art the way you've done. Go out and enjoy it. Thank you. I appreciate that. You guys have any other questions, comments, let me know. Call me, text me. Don't call me. Text me. No, don't call me tonight. You call me tomorrow. I'm just kidding. I don't I don't about the festival thing where the festival art show. Yeah. Yeah. Can so, somebody send Pearl? I'll, I'll forward you. Um, your email. I'll forward it to your email. Okay. What's okay. Thank you. Smith. Oh my. Okay. Jail. Right. Thank so, you so much. Oh, you're you welcome. Thank you, guys. thank you, Thank you, Vanessa. You're welcome. I'll come back by and get that from you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. All right. Well, a collective. Thank you, guys. Have fun. We'll see you guys. We'll see you when you return your pieces. We'll see you in, in your paintings. So um, thank you again. Have a good night. If you have any questions, comments, follow up, you know how to get a hold of me. All right. Thank you. Right, Thanks, thank Morgan. You. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.